Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another plug side chat. In a recent video I visited Dunnegan, California, a site where Electrify America looks like they'll be installing four chargers but two heads each so it looks like a total of eight heads according to the most recent plug share update. It got me wondering about where else Electrify America would be installing new chargers in California. Jeff was kind enough to point out that they had just updated their list of coming soon and California is going to be receiving a number of uh, additional sites to the Dunnegan site. But after reading the sites that Electrify America has stated they're going to be installing in California, such as Novato and Torrance, I'm not really that keen on those sites. I think Dunnegan is a far more important site in, in terms of uh, facilitating long distance travel. I decided, you know what, I would put together a list of, in my opinion, the top 10 sites that Electrify America needs to prioritize in California. Now, these locations, they're not currently listed on their upcoming uh, chargers. And, you know, if EVgo or Green Lots or Charge Points listening in, hey, you guys can jump in on this too. These 10 sites, if Electrify America were to build there, I think after their completion in conjunction with the other public charging that we have available in conjunction with their charging they're putting in and done again, electric vehicle owners in California would have a public charging uh, network that would pretty much match the capability of the current uh, supercharger network that Tesla customers have access to. So here are my top 10 suggestions, and I'll maybe give a little bit of information about each one as to, to why it's so important. Uh, and I'm going to start the list with Lone Pine on Highway 395. And the reason I'm starting the list here is because Highway 395 so far has gotten very little attention from public charging and implementations. If Electrify America were to install four to six chargers in Lone Pine, California, what it does is Lone Pine is about a hundred miles away from Mammoth Lakes, which is a huge uh, vacation spot. Highway 395 itself is a scenic, historic highway. It's a good connection up to Reno from Southern California. It's a very iconic route and it's one that's been underappreciated. It's about 150 to 200 miles north of the current existing public charging infrastructure and it provides a very good stepping stone uh, to the uh, eastern Sierra Nevadas. The next one is Oceanside. Now anybody who's traveled between Los Angeles and San Diego in an electric vehicle knows just how poor the public charging is between these two locations. If you've stopped at the Carlsbad outlets, even though they have a number of chargers there, you know, they're nearly inaccessible. They're overcrowded. People will park there just for the parking spot. Uh, it's not a place that you'd want to rely on, especially if you're uh, traveling between Los Angeles and San Diego. So providing a fast charging site along Interstate 5 uh, and I believe it's Highway 76, uh, given that little junction, you, you would provide a really good addition to the public fast charging infrastructure and make travel between Los Angeles and San Diego a lot more feasible. The next is uh, Paso Robles. There's already a charger in Paso Robles. It's a 24 kilowatt charger, but you know it, it, it's a really good along the Highway 101 route connecting the Bay Area and uh, Southern California. One of the problems with Santa Barbara and San Luis Obispo is they're just too close to Southern California uh, and they leave a huge gap between San Luis Obispo and Salinas, which is the next 50 kilowatt public fast charger. So an implementation in Paso Robles and it also allows for uh, cross traffic with Highway 46. The next along Highway 101 would be Soledad. And Soledad, again, it's south of Salinas. By putting it in Soledad, it shortens up that gap along Highway 101. It's still far enough south from the Bay Area 
that it's not going to get overcrowded by Bay Area, Bay Area traffic, but it's close enough that it actually bridges that gap. It, make, it will make the Highway 101 corridor, especially in conjunction with Paso Robles, uh, passable for pretty much any electric vehicle. The next is also on Highway 101, and this is one that a lot of people might not have heard of, but it's Willits. Now, Willits is north of Santa Rosa on the way to Eureka, but it's also a key junction with connecting Highway 101 near Highway 20 and then over into uh, Mendocino and Fort Bragg along the coast. And by putting a charger in Willits, what you do is you essentially bridge the gap between the Bay Area and the northwestern coast of California. And it's just far enough out of the Bay Area that it's highly useful for long range electric vehicles. Again, another Northern California implementation, but this time along Interstate 5 is Redding, California. Now, Redding already has a couple of chargers, but they're one-offs, one, one 50 kilowatt charger at Target, and uh, you know there's another 24 kilowatt charger, but having an Electrify America implementation, especially near the junction between Highway 299 and Interstate 5, because that junction connects with so many places in Northern California. Redding really is the heart of Northern California, and by putting a large fast charger implementation in Redding, uh, you facilitate long distance electric vehicle travel pretty much throughout most of the North State. Now, another one is Barstow. I know there are chargers that are planned for Barstow, but again, Electrify America, uh, would be wise to, I think, put an implementation in there. In many ways, it's a better location than someplace like the EVgo charger in Baker. Uh, it's farther out than Victorville, and putting one there, you basically put it at a cross-section between a number of different freeways. Uh, Interstate 40 heading out towards Arizona, Highway 58, and then of course uh, the 15, and you're really not too far away from Highway 395, either connecting up to Lone Pine that I mentioned earlier. And now another one is a town maybe some of you haven't heard of, which is Blythe. And you might not have heard of it because while you were driving your internal combustion engine vehicle from Los Angeles to Phoenix, you never thought to stop there. But for an electric vehicle, Blythe would be a near ideal stopping point. And if Electrify America were to put chargers in Blythe, it would provide a connection point between Phoenix and Los Angeles, which currently is difficult for electric vehicles to bridge. It's a very important connection point, in my opinion, and I think it needs to be emphasized. And now we're going to get to the last two of my top 10 list, and these are the, probably the ones people have been waiting for. Now, Bridging the gap with Interstate 5, I think it's easy to jump on some place like the junction with Colinga and Highway 198. Tesla, one of their first supercharger locations was there at the, uh, I believe it's a Harris Ranch. While that would be a good stopping point, with some place like Interstate 5, it's better to put two chargers at the two midpoints between that center point. So the first one I would suggest is Button Willow. Now Button Willow also connects through on Highway 58, but it's just far enough away from Los Angeles and the rest of Southern California. You can still make it, but um, it's about as far as you want to go in an electric vehicle. But it's still close enough that charging up to 50 to 60 percent in Button Willow will get you back over the Tehachapis and into Southern California where there's a large number of DC fast chargers available. And my number one implementation is Santanella. Now there's already a supercharger there and I don't know that a, an Electrify America implementation needs to be done in Santanella Village, but Gustine, which is sort of to the south, basically that intersection between I-5 Highway 152 and Highway 33, uh, somewhere in, in one of those locations, Electrify America should put 
a fast charger location because again that bridges the intersections between several major freeways a lot of traffic goes through there and it would open up a passageway especially using interstate 5 from los angeles up into the southern bay area region so those are my top 10 lists for where electrify america should focus their efforts uh, for their next few implementations and if they can have those done by the end of the year you'd have a network in california for non Tesla EV owners that rivals the supercharger network, especially in conjunction with the current public charging infrastructure. Also, just as a uh, honorable mention, a few other sites that Electrify America should probably target. One would be that Colinga intersection with Highway 198 and Interstate 5, because that is sort of the midpoint on Interstate 5. It's not too far from like I said, the Tesla supercharger implementation at Harris Ranch or their Kettleman City site. Uh, they put those sites in for a reason, and I, I think that would be a key site. Wheeler Ridge, you know, the closer you can get to uh, filling up your EV at the base of the Tehachapi is the better, especially during winter time. Needles, California, which would bridge the gap over on Interstate 40 connecting into northern Arizona. And then King City, which again is kind of like the Kalinga um, on I-5. King City is that halfway point on Highway 101. I'd love to hear your suggestions for what you think are the crucial implementations that Electrify America should prioritize in California, what I missed, uh, what other considerations I should have made. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel, and thank you for watching.